As researchers of open and collaborative innovation, we tie our genesis to the 1970s in Xerox Park, the Palo Alto Research Center in the San Francisco Bay Area. We believe that it is through Xerox Park and their internally created ideas and developed ideas that were commercialized elsewhere in another firm that is the roots and source of our history. But the problem is that's only part of the open and collaborative innovation story. It's an important part, but it overlooks the forward-thinking individuals that inspired these scientists at Xerox Park. And my hope is through an inquiry into the past, we build a better understanding about open and collaborative innovation of today and where we're going in the future. Because I believe if we understand our past and where we came from, we, we will be a lot more mindful of the technology, structures, models, and leaders that will drive innovation in the future. So my thesis is that our origin may not be found with, in a group of scientists meddling with vacuum tubes and semiconductors, but might, may go much deeper. Something that has touched us all. A phenomenon that inspired those scientists at Xerox Park. The many companies that went public that were spun out of Xerox Park and the technology companies of today that practice open and collaborative innovation. Join me in a story of collaboration and innovation about a group of ridiculously forward-thinking musicians who almost single-handedly invented the future we live in today. A story of community, a story of experimenting, a story of sharing, and a story about how the most famous jam band in history, the Grateful Dead, influenced the practice of open and collaborative innovation. Will you join me in a long, strange trip? Music has influenced our culture. If it's Bob Dylan's song, the times are changing which echoed the idea that of the outdated practice of segregation and of, and of oppression. Music has influenced our morals. If it's Bob Marley and the Wailer song, my belly full, but we still hungry, which warns us of the danger of letting a nation's poor go hungry. Music also influences our emotions. If it's John Lennon's famous song, Imagine, which conveys a message of world peace. Music has even influenced how we innovate. And it is the jam band, the Grateful Dead, which has socially influenced the practice of open and collaborative innovation. But connecting music to innovation isn't new, and it goes back to the music genre of jazz. And it is the music genre of jazz that has been tied to many and several management constructs in the literature. Several constructs include strategic decision making, organizational creativity, and organizational learning. Several more are list listed above. But it is the music genre of jazz that has dominated and shaped our understanding of organizational innovation. This is evident with more than 2,600 citations in the famous jazz improvisation special edition in the Org Science Journal. There it was compared to and used as a lens to understand product innovation, organizational learning, and structure. On the other hand, jazz has received extensive resistance and considerable resistance due to its limited acceptance and application 
and limits on diversity. And though I suggest that this metaphor was important for helping us understand conventional models of organizational innovation, it is outdated and no longer useful in today's business environment. In fact, what I see in jazz is a prison that inhibits our growth, controls how we think of innovation, and constrains how we work. Because I believe, and if we believe, that work has changed, and the technology that we use has changed, and how we conduct business and innovate has changed, then we also need new metaphors to help us understand the, these new and emerging models. And as a researcher of open and collaborative innovation, I refuse to accept jazz as our future. This is why I've set out to investigate innovation jams at IBM and to choose a different method and approach to reshaping our understanding of open and collaborative innovation and to push forward with this agenda. And it is through my research with IBM and their innovation jam platform that I propose this new metaphor, the metaphor of the jam band that parallels with open and collaborative innovation. So what is a jam band? Certainly it's a musical group, but it enacts certain characteristics that can be characterized with the idea of improvisation, experimentation, that helps speed up the pace of innovation. It draws from a wide spectrum of musical traditions, combines several and various forms. It's not bound by any single music genre. The constraints in creating music or new forms, and it's associated with influencing change, sense of community, collaboration, and sharing. Beyond incorporating aspects of jazz, a jam band employs a toolbox of music genres. These include blues, reggae, funk, rock, bluegrass, and psychedelia. And it is the context of the music industry in the case study of the Grateful Dead that helps us view innovation through this jam band lens. And there's four main themes that help us in this investigation. One, the context of co-creating community. Two, sharing of intellectual property, experimenting and problem solving. And lastly, creating new business models. When we compare concepts of innovation to the music genre of jazz and a jam band, we find parallels, each related to different schools of thought or paradigms of innovation. It is here where we can see maybe jazz is tied to more closed models, and this jam band genre is embodying the essence of more open approaches or open and collaborative models of innovation. Such concepts may include this co-creative nature to community and this open and sharing of intellectual property. Formed in the San Francisco Bay Area in the early 1960s, the Grateful Dead, the most famous jam band in history, inspired its audience for 30 years. But today, their legacy continues. But it is their innovative approach to their music and their business that helps us inform us about this open and collaborative innovation. And here is how. The Grateful Dead embody this co-creative nature through allowing users or user innovation and its fans, also known as deadheads, to co-create with the band. This includes its fans archiving shows, tracking set lists, naming songs, creating the shared context at this event and music venue. They even created a mailing and distribution network that they sent out for news and ticketing. And it was through this distribution network that the band forged this two-way communication with the audience, or the deadheads, and the band themselves. The band listened. The 
the band listened to their fans. And the fans listened to them and shared their ideas. And one way they did this was creating a 50-tune list called the Grateful Dead Anthology. And it was the Grateful Dead fans that offered and suggested that list or list of songs and edited them and distributed them. Um, and this was an example of the Grateful Dead listening to their fans. Moreover, it was through this user innovation, fans influenced which music venues that the Grateful Dead went to, which ones to avoid, and even to the level of detail of which halls or theaters had bad acoustics and the band shouldn't attend to or go to. What was unique about the Deadheads, they were self-organizing and self-governing. At shows and even outside, they would police themselves outside of these sprung up communities that evolved, where there were bazaars, selling merchandise, and a whole bunch of other recreational activities. This area was known as Shakedown Street, very famous because of this collaborative nature. This represented the blurring between the band and its audience, represented in this image above. Can you tell which people in there were the band members, the Grateful Dead, the roadies, the fans, or security? It's not so clear. Next, the Grateful Dead utilized a unique approach to intellectual property management that was never seen before. Imagine this. They allowed their fans and invited their fans to come, bring equipment, and record their live shows. These people were known as tapers. They went to an extent that they would even plug into the sound system for a better live recording. Once they recorded these live versions, they would share them freely with other deadheads and fans, reminiscent of today's freemium model that technology companies are employing. We can think of many, Pandora or Spotify, where they offer a product or service for free. Next, today, just on archive.org, there's more than 11,000 live recorded shows that you can listen to, watch, that have been labeled and organized by these Deadhead fans. This approach was unique because it was about access and abundance instead of scarcity to create value. Next, the Grateful Dead were pioneers of experimenting for problem solving and embodied this do-it-yourself approach to this problem solving. Because the Grateful Dead grew from small music venues with only thousands of people to about several hundred thousand, they needed a different sound system or a PA system. So they created their own wall of sound, which included 604 speakers that they created that traveled with them from show to show, concert to concert, nation to nation. There was no PA system that they could just purchase off the shelf, so they had to create one. Other forms of experimenting including developing their own record label and building recording knowledge, and even having the deadheads as early adapters to peer-to-peer -peer learning, forms of the Usenet and Apartnet, early forms of the internet. Next, the Deadheads and the Grateful Dead turned the music industry upside down. They didn't rely on the traditional sales of records, but on touring and ticket sales in these live concerts. Without a top 10 hit up until 1987, the Grateful Dead played in more than 2,300 live shows and produced more than 36,000 songs, making sure that no show was ever the same experience. Complementing this touring approach model, the Dead became leaders in commercialization of merchandise not seen before. They even created their own merchandise division and sent out their Grateful Dead Almanac filled with non-music related products to 140,000 people quarterly driving sales of up to 45 million per year. Grateful Dead, the band, 
Grateful Dead, the phenomenon is a story of innovation and collaboration, a story of our history, a story of how music influenced open and collaborative innovation. And though our research paradigm is relatively new in the academic literature, researchers and practitioners of open and collaborative innovation may find great insight into looking into our past to discover where we'll, we'll, where we'll be going in the future. And in the famous words of the lead singer and guitarist Jerry Garcia of the Grateful Dead, what a long, strange trip it has been.